Hi, I actually forgot to say in the video, but the monetization from this will be going to trans and non-binary charities and I will leave a list down below so you can donate to if you would like to. And it shows that at the end of the day, her allyship will never be as important as an award to her. How about we just stop celebrating cis people for telling trans and non-binary stories? How about it? Hi everyone, how are you? I hope that you're very, very well. I look rough as a bear's behind today. I know that. Let's just get past it, okay? A few months ago, I did a video on Jagged Little Pill and the harmful and problematic issues surrounding it. It was a pretty long and in-depth video, so I would suggest if you do want to learn a little bit more about the history with examples and things, I would suggest watching that video. I'll leave a link to it down below. Since then, a lot has happened and I I want to talk about it. For anybody who wasn't aware or didn't see the video, I will give a very quick rundown. I'll leave a timestamp for if you are very much caught up. Basically, Jagged Little Pill is the Alanis Morissette musical and in the out of town tryouts at ART, the character of Jo was very clearly written as a non-binary teenager. In the video that I mentioned, I did put side to side videos of the original production and the Broadway production so that you could see the the changes that were made. Lauren Patton, who plays the role of Jo, at the time used they them pronouns when describing Jo, and there are receipts for all of this. Between the show closing at ART and it going to Broadway, lots of people were saying, you know, Lauren is very talented, she was great in the show, but really there's so little representation for trans and non-binary people in theatre that really a non-binary person or somebody under the trans and non-binary umbrella should be playing the role of Jo. Let me just say for anyone in the comments who says it's acting that's the whole point of acting it's not the perfect example but like where is the line drawn on it's acting would you be happy for a white person to play a character that is written specifically as a black person is that just acting is blackface just acting when you look at the brutality and harm in history and up to today to trans and non-binary people i do think that when able to they should be telling their own stories I just don't want to have that argument with people, so that's my stance on it. But basically, when the show reopened on Broadway, the character of Jo had changed. Jo was now using she, her pronouns exclusively. Previously in the show, Jo had come out wearing a binder. In this, Jo comes out in a sports bra. Jo's major conflict in the show at ART was, like, summed up in a line of, my mum's okay with the gay thing, but she's not okay with the gender thing. Whereas in on Broadway it was very much my mum's not okay with the gay thing so it was about sexuality rather than gender which can be combined for many people but in this situation it didn't seem to be. People were then understandably very upset with a non-binary character being taken out of a mainstream show when there already is so little representation. Lauren and the show then started saying that Jo had never been non-binary or been on a gender journey at all. Then the Broadway shutdown happened, the show was nominated for 15 Tony Awards and then Jagged Little Pill during the shutdown decided to have some kind of like deep talks about the topics covered in the show and they had one on gender where in the video and in a statement they said that Jo again was only ever cis. Lauren said that basically she had used they them pronouns to appease audience members who had felt a connection to the character but ultimately that was their interpretation and it was a wrong one. So basically gaslighting fans and other theatre creators who had had a very real experience and connection to Jo. Since then a lot has happened and so that's where we are today. Iris Minas has been very vocal about their experience in the show. Iris has spoken about being used as a source of reference when writing Jo in the rehearsal room and in the writing process and all around their own gender experience and then ultimately being in a show that is gaslighting you and this minority community that you are a part of and Iris basically announced that Z would not be returning to the show when it reopened. Now on September 17th Jagged Little Pill released a statement around the character Jo. They admitted that they had basically lied about Jo and that the show would now be going through dramaturgical changes to specifically focus on Jo who is a gender non-conforming teen on an open-ended 
extended gender journey. They said that in the future, when casting Joe, they would only be auditioning people who are on a gender journey or who have an understanding of that experience personally, including artists who are non-binary, gender fluid, gender expansive or otherwise fall un under the trans community umbrella. They said that they would be doing listening and learning sessions to focus on anti-racism and transphobia and would be donating to relevant charities as well. The next day, on the 18th, Lauren Patton released a 45 minute interview with Shakina Nafak, who is an actor and a trans activist. In the sit down chat, they really went into a lot of detail about Joe and Lauren's personal experience of kind of creating the character. I tried my best to watch this video with an open mind. And I do think that Shakina did a really good job with the questions that they asked. But to be honest, it still felt, even though it was 45 minutes long, it still felt kind of surface level to me and kind of ambiguous on Lauren's side. I'm gonna try to summarize the main points of the video, which started with the ambiguity of of Joe's character. Lauren explained that when she auditioned for the role of Joe, Joe was cisgender and that if Joe had been posted as being trans or non-binary then she wouldn't have auditioned for it because it's wrong for her to do that as a cis woman. Just remember that. Lauren then said that basically during the creation process, during ART and previews and things, the character of Joe evolved and started to be presenting as other than somebody cisgender, as opposed to a cis woman on a sexuality journey. Iris again has also confirmed this and were questioned on their personal experience as a trans person throughout the process. Lauren said that still though, the character in her mind was still cis and that when audiences came in she didn't realise that things like binding or dead naming that audiences would relate to that. I mean again the script literally says my mum's okay with the gay thing but not the gender thing. How can you not expect people to think that Joe is anything but cis. Like, we literally have you in 4K, Lauren. Still lies. Anyway, Shakina reminded Lauren that this was cis privilege. You know, Lauren said she didn't notice and she agreed. Lauren also said that the ambiguity around Joe was harmful and she understands that. Lauren talked about her own relationship with gender and described herself multiple times as a mask of center queer woman. I do think that the ambiguity within Lauren's own language is is kind of conflating the idea of butch women and I can't think of the right word but like there's a difference between gender expression and gender inside does that make sense hi friends I'm just watching this back and to be honest I don't think I clarified that point very well and I'm still struggling to do so but what I'm trying to say is that basically Lauren was explaining her own relationship with gender and she was basically saying like you know there's days when I don't feel comfortable in certain things that are maybe more feminine and things and I do think that is a valid point especially with queer women that is a, a very common thing but still it's very like ambiguous and at the end of the day she still says that she is cis so even though she's kind of hinting that maybe she is on some kind of gender journey herself she still describes herself as cis and i don't know like i'm trying not to pass comment on that but i'm just saying what she said in the video and i think it's valid to include it but i don't think i added anything great to it back to the video Shakina did ask Lauren in the video, why don't you just leave? People are very upset with you about this. Why don't you just leave the show? She first explained that she knows that after her, the role will be cast with trans and non-binary people and that she's so excited about that. She did say that although she is not a person who is under the trans and non-binary community umbrella, that she feels like a lot of herself is in this role. And so she wanted to stay for that reason. She said that she didn't want her last show to be like the awkward, March 11th Broadway shutdown day. She wanted a bit more of a send-off and therefore she is going to stay for the time being. So let's just clarify. Even though the script is going to be changed for reopening, for Joe to be on a gender journey and after Lauren, Joe will only be played by trans or non-binary actors and that if when she auditioned, Joe was on a gender journey and only should have been played by trans and non-binary actors, she wouldn't have auditioned for it because that's so wrong as she said and although she herself is cisgender she's still gonna play the role cause she wants to it feels like every time she talks on this she's basically saying yeah yeah cisgender people should not play the role of joe apart from me <sighs> 
and I care about trans and non-binary actors telling their own stories, but not as much as I care about me getting a final show and an award. Anyway, after that, I think I missed Nora's official statement of leaving the show, but Nora Shell, who is a non-binary actor who was in the original cast of Jagged Little Pill, on the 24th of September released a statement disclosing the negligence of the stage management and creative team towards Nora and their health when they were in the show. Nora explained everything in great detail, so I will leave a link to their statement down below. Highly recommend reading it, please, please do. But I will give a slight summary. So basically, Nora was in the show, Nora was suffering with PCOS and had growths on their vagina that were making them severely unwell and they needed to be operated on immediately. The stage manager's job in a show is to advocate on behalf of actors in difficult situations like this. In this case, Ira Mont was the stage manager and um, Nora told Ira what was happening. He did not relay that information to the team above him so it meant for Nora to have numerous uncomfortable discussions of having to to disclose their own sensitive medical information to numerous people numerous times. It is the job of the stage manager to do that. Ira Mont didn't. The creative team said to Nora, basically, you can't have time off to go and have this operation. You have to stay here. It, again, it would be Ira's job to say, no, this actor needs to go home. Their health comes first. Nora ended up postponing their operation, which resulted in them collapsing on the stairs before going on stage. This is clear clear and blatant negligence in the workplace. The terrible thing is that Ira Mont is an experienced stage manager on Broadway. He is also a vice president at Actors Equity. We need to remember that yes, theatre is entertainment and it's magical and it's amazing, but the people who are in these shows are real people doing real jobs. They deserve to be looked after in the workplace. They deserve to be safe and cared for when they are at work. Imagine the stress of having this massive health thing hanging over you your doctor is saying you have to have immediate surgery your work tells you that you can't at the same time you're opening your first Broadway show you're in previews so the show is changing most days you're also in a show is causing a stir within the Broadway community because of the harm one of the lead characters is doing to your own community I can't even imagine how hard that must have been for Nora and the strength that they have to have got through that I also think it is so ironic that during the same week of Nora's statement, Jagged Little Pill's creative team were being lauded by other people in the industry for allowing Heidi Blickenstaff to come into the show on a temporary basis while Elizabeth Stanley took some time off for maternity leave. All that while Nora has just released a statement explaining how the creative team have in the past refused to help their own gynecological appointments and health. Since Nora's statement, Celia Rose Gooding, who played Frankie in the show made a statement and has left the show. Her last performance would be the Tonys and she cited the harm to the trans and non-binary community. Antonio Cipriano, that is a cat tail, I'm sorry. Antonio Cipriano has also left the show, again citing the harm to trans and non-binary actors. And again, that his last performance with the show would be Tony Sunday. Ah, Tony Sunday. Where do we even begin? with Tony Sunday. So the show was nominated for 15 Tonys for Celia, Catherine, Best Musical, Best Choreography, and the show walked away with two awards. And honestly, when I woke up in the morning to see the results, I was speechless. Firstly, Diablo Cody won the award for Best Book. Can we just recognize that this book is currently going through rewrites because it is harmful and non-inclusive? Cool, 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 cool. And it just got a Tony Award. I'm sorry, anyone, make that make sense to me. During Diablo Cody's speech, she didn't say anything about the controversy, anything about the people whose stories she's writing. I mean, she's literally said before that she can't write queer stories. So why did you do it, babe? Why did you do it? Also, a side note, she kept calling it a play. It's a musical, babe. Stop calling it a play. Worse than that, Lauren Patton won the award for Best Actress in a Featured Role in a Musical for Playing Joe. Lauren got the award in a binary category, actress, not actor or anything, and then had the audacity to thank the trans and non-binary colleagues and friends who have helped her on her journey and who have supported her and having difficult conversations with her? Really? 
I mean, she started the speech by saying, there is a reckoning in theatre right now. That reckoning is partly on you. You could have turned down your Tony. It would have been great. It can be done. Julie Andrews turned down her Tony nomination for Victor Victoria. Listen, I get it. As a theatre kid, the biggest goal in theatre kid life is to win a Tony award. I understand how you've worked for something for years. You're finally at that, at that moment. Wouldn't you rather hold your head up and do it in a show that doesn't hurt people. She said in her speech as well about the change we need to see on Broadway. Ah yes, the change of having people play roles written for them, but not until you've had your time to get your Tony first. Right, Lauren. The thing is, she's been given every opportunity to take herself out of the show. Other people have done that, and it shows that at the end of the day, her allyship will never be as important as an award to her. That's how it reads. She feels she is owed this part, and and that is why she hasn't taken herself out of the show. She did announce a couple of weeks ago that she's been cast as a lead role in a TV show. So to be honest, I think that maybe she had like a tip that she was gonna win the Tony. She's like, I'll be in the show for a bit because I presume that like there'll be some sort of pay rise or something maybe for when you're a Tony Award winner in a show. I actually don't know that's pure speculation but whatever but maybe she knew that she was gonna get that she's like i'll do a few weeks and then i'll leave to go and be in this tv show that is what i envisage happening overall i do have to say i was just super disappointed with the tony awards this year i've seen people who purport to be inclusive and care about minorities in the community and in the industry while standing and clapping for lauren virtue signaling on stage holding a tony award dressed as beetlejuice the older I get as well the, the more I realize that the Tonys is not about art and it's not about diversity it's not about passion it's about self-gratification and money <sighs> it's like I've loved Aaron Tveit for so many years right I'm really happy that he won a Tony I've thought he deserved a Tony for years but like in his speech he's standing up there saying Broadway is for the many not the few I have to laugh because it's like Aaron Tveit no offense but the cheapest ticket for your show this evening it's going for $95. That is for the few, not the many. I'm sorry, it is. And your person of colour, non-binary co-star left the very show that you've just been awarded for saying how corrupt Broadway is and, and how things need to change and nothing has changed since they made that step. It is not for the many, it is for the few. Like, I love Rent, but it just felt icky this year. I don't know, maybe I'm too sensitive. I do understand people calling this hate and the things that have been said to Lauren and... The things that have been said about her, you know, when it gets super personal and stuff, that's not okay. Listen, like, I've said all this, I've not commented on Lauren's pictures, I've not sent her messages, I haven't attacked her area of the internet, but I also think that we do need to 